Surprise. <laughs> I'm back. I thought I would try to do better about my channel and even better about my life and having more structure and getting up and doing what I'm supposed to do and, and then get back in bed. But don't sleep all day long. Man. That's, a, that's a commitment I'm making to myself. So I'm going to, this is going to be a little short video, but the things, that's some things I said I was going to start and I didn't finish. You know how you procrastinate and you forget what you even said you were going to do. So I, I introduced this book oh, a couple of years ago, the book of answers. And what I want to do is bring it back. Every time I do a video, I want to go to the book of answers and for my audience if you have a question have a question at the beginning of the video and think about it then at the end of the video we'll see what the book of answers has what what the a book says but think about that that's what we're going to do at the end of the video it's just a, a game but today i want to talk about this book I've talked about it before, but I've been reading it, and I don't know. Every time I read it, I find out something different, and I help this individual write the book, but I said what I'm going to do is just start reading different chapters of it so we could, uh, I could introduce you to the book, and you could buy this book on Amazon name of it is Powerful Quotes by Harold E. Tolliver. Today I want to talk about the first chapter. And the chapter is titled, The Concept of God. Chapter 1. The Lord God was used to designate the perfect being that the divine principle, our God, created to bring out his qualities here on earth. So this is the concept of God. This is the divine and the only man that the divine principle created. Man on the spiritual side of his nature has access to and can become this Lord God or one man. So in other words, we can become this. Let me read it again. This is the divine and only man that the divine principle created. Man on the spiritual side of his nature has access to and can become this Lord God or one man. So we can become this. Afterward, this divine man became known as the Christ. So we all can become the Christ. Is that what it's saying? Then the Lord God, using his power to create, did create other beings like unto himself. Let us make man. These beings were afterward called sons of the Lord God. And their creator was called Father, and the divine principle was called God. This infinite intelligence was ruling long before the universe began to appear as being. Shekinah is the presence of God in the world. Wholeness, joy, and love is the nature of God. And the gifts of God when we manifest them in our lives. The light inspires us because it is a symbol for the spirit continual surrendering of the will to the divine presence. We need to merge and become fully one with the divine presence before we can manifest God's will upon earth. Man does not begin at birth, nor end at death. The soul has existed since the beginning, passing through life after life, 
until it has regained its original state as it was before the fall. You must know that you are entitled to every good and perfect gift of God, and you must prepare to receive these gifts through the knowledge of God as your divine nature. This is just, oh man, sometimes I read this and I, if I read it out loud, I say, wow, how come I forgot this? And it's, I mean, you all listen now. When you listen, it's somewhere in the crevices of your soul and in your mind, your soul says, amen, because you are remembering. And we can stir up your mind by way of remembrance, but these words will make you recall things that you have forgotten centuries and many eons lives of, of lives ago you had forgotten these and we have to be remembered we have to make ourselves re remember and i don't know how spirit deals with everybody because it's different but i hear things and then there's a silence in my head and then my soul say are you listening are you listening and then it waits for me to acknowledge say yeah or nay and then sometimes i say i don't understand and then i'll go back to that thing that was puzzling me and then i understand for that moment in time and then as life goes by and tribulations and just stuff happens i forget what i learned i mean how how magnificent it was a couple of days ago it's like wow look at that i i understand and then something that happened to wipe it all away so we have to continue to feed our souls by and make us remember these things and it, let me let me get back on the book okay okay now we're going to another topic okay it's still the concept of god death is for people who love the superficial pleasures of the body more than external pleasures of the spirit. Let me read that again. Hmm. Death is for people who love the superficial pleasures of the body more than the internal pleasures of the spirit. Most people have surrendered to the idea that death is inedible and beyond our control. I have surrendered to that thought. Hmm. This idea is taught by most religious organizations, even through the even through the Savior or saints of all great religions have conquered death. I didn't read that right. This idea is taught by most religious organizations, even though the Savior or saints of our religions have conquered death. So, yeah, we, we, in Christianity, we've been taught that Christ conquered death. And I think we just don't know how to conquer death. And it's not like you, to me, it's not like you're not going to ever die. But you accept what's beyond this life as life continuing you can you see the connection between this the life that this body lives and connect to the different dimensions that we don't we don't remember we ain't gonna say we don't know because we just don't remember because we've done the same thing deja vu we've done it before okay let me get back because i don't want to stray too far this idea is also taught in the public schools. We program our children for death. When we trade our conscious death urge for physical immortality, philosophy, and spiritual purification practices, we can achieve personal aliveness, youthfulness, and body mastery more consciously. God is a living reality, not just a name. Okay, now, this is just the introduction to the concept of God. And then as you, I just finished that introduction. And then we're going into the little bitty quotes. These are the quotes. And the author has, I don't know how, oh, he has so many books. How many books he went through over 
200 books and just getting quotes. But now we're going into the quotes. Quote one. God never destroys nor hurt nor hinders any of his children or creatures. If God did these things, he would not be God. The divine presence is within. Knowing ourselves is also knowing God. See God as creative principle flowing through you. Concentrate and energize that principle and send it out with more dynamic influence. You are part of God's divine plan. Every time you think of God, you are God's divine plan. Use your pure thoughts in accordance with the divine principle, your pure thoughts. It's okay to be human as long as you remember you are divine also. The Son of God, the Messiah, has manifested in the material world as a light in the darkness to show the way to enlightenment with the divine consciousness. Spirit, God, creative energy, creative force, divine mind, Father, Mother, God, original source. Only the pure and innocent can approach the divine presence. God is infinite consciousness, and though there is no description of it, any description that is attempted to even be placed upon it is a form of of limitation in itself. So I guess when you try to dis describe God, you put in God in a in a box when you try it cuz it's it's just so immense and oh god, I was a friend and I uh Hera, we were talking one day and he 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 just don't don't get it when I'm I'm, I'm going to stop right now. But he doesn't understand it when women get happy in church and screaming and all of that. He said, I don't understand that. He said his grandmother used to do that and he would sit next to her and he would look. He said, oh, please don't let her do that. Please don't. And I was trying to explain to him how I felt in church. And I, I, I sit there and I can feel it coming when I think about, all I have to do is think about the goodness and the the things and the manifestation, just God, when I think about it, just, oh man, I can't do anything but scream. Now, I'm a screamer. I I don't understand it. I scream, I scream. And I when I feel like I'm getting ready to do that, I say, Lord, I, gotta, I have to get up and leave because if I'm in a place where they don't do that kind of worship, then I, I just have to stop. But I remember one time, I, we were sitting in a church and my brother was sitting next to me and I didn't know that he had been seeking the Holy Ghost for a long time. And we were old. This happened maybe 20 years ago. And we were just sitting in church together and man, somebody got to sing a song and somebody was preaching. And it, it seemed like on the day of Pentecost how, because how the Spirit started moving and Oh, you could you could feel it, and I said, "Oh Lord, that's all I can say." And I screamed, and my brother, he said, "Mary, I was about to get the Holy Ghost, and I heard you scream, and I knew you had gotten my blessing." I said, "Were you angry with me, Charlie?" And he said, "No, I just I just said, dog, some thought came in my head, and I lost it." He said, "By the time I thought I wanted to get back to that point, I couldn't do it," and I, it's not so much that I have to be in church. I can be driving and I mean, just my mind could just drift away. And the next thing I know, I said, Ooh, let me, let me pull over. Cause I, I got to scream. I got to scream out. I got to just, my soul it has to do this. It's kind of like how you would act if you won something or you enjoy it. That's it's the word joy. Because I watch people when they on the Wheel of Fortune and just, you know, jumping up and down and screaming, ah, you know, like that. Well, that's the way I am. And when, when I, oh man, 
They talk about the joy of the Lord is my strength. And I don't go to church right now, but I, it's, ooh, God, I, I can't explain. I'm not going to get happy on, on uh, <laughs> YouTube. But when I read things like this, it makes me remember the joy of the Lord. And I remember one time I I was in, I was visiting a church. But I didn't join. I don't think I did. But I, I loved the way they did their services. And I had a screaming fit. I did. It was just such a good, oh, God, I couldn't do nothing. And after church, do you know, this man is a deacon or, or assistant or something. He's a preacher. But he came up, he came up to me. He said, Sister Mary, I just love watching you and the Holy Ghost. He said, I just ain't never seen nothing like that in my life. I love watching you. And I, I, I I didn't, I didn't receive that well, because to me, it was like you were getting some kind of carnal feeling out of that to hear a woman scream like that. It was, I, I figured it was something that wasn't right. I said, so when I come and I don't get happy, he said, it ain't worth coming to church. I just come to see how you, how the Lord deal with you. And I said, oh man, that, I don't want to mess it up for nobody. So I, I quit you know, going to places like that, and the, my joy, and, the, and I know every, and I don't even know why women express their joy more so, but I've seen some men who scream. My ex was a screamer. He'd be on them drums beating, and they thing you know, he's screaming and rolling on the floor. And I said, ooh, look at that. But this is the way people express their joy. Let me get back to this. <laughs> I didn't tend to get off that, but I was thinking about that. Oh, man. Oh, man. Let's give it one way. We, God created all, and all is God. The divine created both good and evil to test our spiritual status. Hmm. Your only contact with the divine is the divine in you. Your only contact with a master is through the mastery in yourself. The law of God expresses pure light or life through Jesus or man and becomes the Christ upon earth. We are here on earth to do God and be God of truth and love. Each man's each man becomes the Christ when the Lord is understood and lived. Jesus came to establish a more permanent way of spiritual development, and that is centered upon the knowledge of the divine principle and spirit within. He has given to you all the divine ability to know that it pertains to love, life, and godliness. Now, if healing doesn't pertain to life, what does? Finances also pertain to life. I'm going to stop right here. How many minutes have I been doing this? Oh, 18. Okay. But this is what we're going to do. Maybe on Saturday, I'll read from this book. But remember, we are going over the first chapter, the concept of God. And I'll continue uh, every Saturday. To finish reading different chapters in this book but as i close those of you who thought of a question and you want to play this game the book of answers i'm trying to think um uh, i know what my question is and i uh i won't tell you guys what my question is because it's personal and 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 you know he, here we go we're just gonna see what the book of answers has to Say, this is just a game. <laughs> it says, it may already be a done deal. <laughs> oh man, that's right on time. It may already be a done deal. I hope it is. Anyway, guys. We'll see you again. Uh, we'll be talking about powerful quotes again next Saturday. And you all have a pleasant, pleasant weekend.
I'll talk to you next time. Bye.